Hi, I'm Robert Scoble, and welcome to Rackspace San Francisco. We're so happy to be here. <laughs> it's a big morning for us um, at Rackspace and for the entire industry. And to put a, a punctuation mark on it, you know, Rack, Rocky and I go around the world and study startups and study innovative companies. Uh, people who are building companies. And last Thursday, uh, Firebase came out and, and showed us off uh, what they're doing. And they're doing a real-time database, wh which is just mind-blowing mind -blowing technology. But it's these kinds of innovative companies that are changing the world and that are pushing us all together. I mean, right before we turned on the cameras, we were uh, talking about Google self-driving cars and all the stuff that's going on in the world that we are all in the middle of right now. And that world is blowing up because of infrastructure. You know, infrastructure isn't always the sexiest thing in the world, right? Oh, come on, man. <laughs> well, you know, <laughs> come on, let's go do, do we talk about the plumbing in our house? No, but it sure is nice when you turn on the tap and there's water, right? right? Or you got a flush. <laughs> right? you flush. <laughs> and so, um, I just want, in, in the first couple minutes, just give me the, uh, th I'm going to introduce you guys, but give me the elevator pitch of the news. So if somebody is watching this around the world and they only have five minutes, mm -hmm. at least they understand what we just, what's going on here today. Well, but uh, anyways, I'm here with uh, Lanham, who's Rackspace CEO, and John N. Gates, who's uh, CTO, CTO, the geek. <laughs> <laughs> the pretty it's face and the geek, <laughs> right? Yeah, yeah. That's right. I get, to be, I get to be pretty face. That is shocking. Okay. <laughs> well, my mother agrees with you. All right. Um, but, but the news today is that uh, we're going to share some progress in our portfolio. We think the progress we've made on our portfolio serving customers in our cloud is going to knock people's socks off. And we're pretty pumped up to share it today. Yeah. So can you give me the specifics of what we're announcing? Uh, what, what well, we're, we're going to get into a demo, oh, and awesome. you're going to get to geek out here in a little bit with Jim Gates and Mark Interante and others. Okay. okay, so we'll get into all that. But the, the gist of it is we've made big investments in OpenStack. We're ready to move our public cloud to OpenStack, and we think the service suite we're going to provide customers is going to be phenomenal. Yeah. Why, why does the world care about OpenStack? You know, just well, to set, if anybody hasn't heard about OpenStack, because this video is going out to people who, who might... Right. Heard about it? What, what is OpenStack, and why? Why is this such a huge bet for the industry? But OpenStack is the Linux for the cloud, effectively. In every tech category, you know, we have proprietary standards and open standards. Our belief at Rackspace is that we unleash innovation with open standards. That an open system over time can out innovate and reach a massive scale relative to a proprietary system. So as the cloud emerges, it's going to change how all of us consume IT the rest of our lives. Specifically, you know, corporate customers. So we think the cloud needs an open standard. We believe OpenStack is that standard, and we've made a huge bet on it. Very cool. So can we dig in and hear the yeah, news a little bit in. in some detail? Let's dig in. So for the past 13 years at Rackspace, we have followed a vision of wanting to build one of the world's greatest service companies. And our mission here is it's pretty straightforward. We want to create incredible customer technology outcomes, and we want to make it easy for our customers to harness the power of the cloud. We believe that IT is going through a shift and this shift is going to lead us to a cloud services world. Up to this point in IT, customers had to buy a bunch of inputs. They had to run these inputs themselves, and the customers were ultimately responsible for the IT outcome. The problem with this is that these inputs were often proprietary systems. You know, and the problem with the proprietary system is it creates lock-in. Now, let's face it, lock-in is a good thing if you are the vendor because it's very lucrative. You know, lock-in is a bad thing if you're a customer because it's very expensive. The promise of a cloud services world is that customers get to skip all the noise of inputs and go straight to the output itself. Whether you want to call it software as a service, technology as a service, infrastructure as a service, you know, all of this is a movement about skipping the inputs and going straight to the output. In a technology service world, companies don't get to compete just on lock-in. They have to compete on the technology and the outcomes that they provide for customers. And so this new model is emerging, and we think OpenStack is a driving force in it. If you look at where all of us used to be, it turns out the PC was the center of our computing universe. Now, that may not look very impressive on that screen, but we should give the laptop its day and recognize that that was a pretty darn good piece of innovation for what it did. Well, a few short years went by and we woke up with a plethora of devices. 
All right, in this plethora of devices, it's everything from our smartphones to our desktops to our laptops to our desktop at work, our desktop at home, et cetera. You know, now we have tablets to boot. So we now live in a hyper-connected world, and that hyper-connected world has a lot of data demands. It has a lot of storage demands. It has a lot of compute demands. So in the center of this hyper-connected world is now the cloud. The cloud has become the epicenter, the brain, the hub for this hyper-connected world. And the, the connections and network activity here is fascinating for all of us. You know, we're seeing new business models emerge. We're seeing new opportunities in the marketplace. Some of the stuff that Scobalizer just talked about with self-driving cars, you know, all of these new technologies are dependent upon an active brain in the center, an active hub here with the cloud. If we go back and think about tech a little bit, you know, here's Linux. And Linux taught us a wonderful lesson. Number one, it showed us how an open standard can emerge in a proprietary world. Who would have bet years ago that Linux would rise to its share that it has today? You know, not many of us. I mean, it has been a remarkable story. And what Linux teaches us is that when you get the wisdom of the crowd focused on an important piece of technology, you know, the sky's the limit. That literally people can come together around a common cause to create a market standard in technology that literally changes the world. OpenStack, we believe, is Linux for the cloud. It's open source like Linux. It's getting rapid traction like Linux. If you look at OpenStack's uh, latest release, Essex, more than 200 developers contributed to it. If you look at some of the financial, sorry, some of the corporate and financial support that's coming into it, it's backed by companies like Red Hat, IBM, Cisco, Dell, HP, of course, my favorite, Rackspace. All right, so that we are, we are believers in OpenStack and think that this movement is gonna transform how businesses consume cloud technologies. And OpenStack is in production today. It's in production in places like Mercado Libre. It's in production in places like the San Diego Supercomputing Center. And it's in production in places like Rackspace. You know, we've been involved in this. If you look at some of the OpenStack clouds we've set up already for customers, we set up for a company like Sony Entertainment America, as well as eBay's X-Commerce division. So OpenStack has real traction and progress in the marketplace. As we get into the roadmap discussion, the demo discussion here in a little bit, we'll all get to see how this technology is really maturing at a rapid rate. Up to this point in the cloud, it's really been a tale of two cities. We have had public clouds created on proprietary technologies like Amazon Web Services. And these proprietary public clouds have been slugging it out with private clouds based on proprietary technology like VMware. Now the struggle with this is that these proprietary systems were created in a way that they were not designed to talk to each other. So anytime we have incompatibility like this, the opportunity is to figure out how to bridge things together. Well, this is what OpenStack can do. You know, Open source software is uniquely positioned to be able to bridge the gap between private and public clouds. When the community gets behind a project like this, it can link things together. So our belief is that we're gonna see OpenStack emerge as a rising standard for open cloud computing going forward. Now, obviously at Rackspace, we have made a big bet on OpenStack. We've invested millions of dollars behind it. We've invested some of our best human capital behind it. We've changed our roadmaps and tailored our roadmaps around the progress of OpenStack. And our belief here is pretty darn simple. That as the world shifts to a cloud services world, that it's not about competing on lock-in. That it's one, that competition dynamic changes to be one part technology and one part outcomes. We think the emerging technology standard in the cloud is gonna be OpenStack. And we think the emerging service standard in the cloud is gonna be fanatical support. So we believe that our fanatical support combined with the technology standard of OpenStack is going to create incredible outcomes uh, for our customers. So you're just announcing that Rackspace's cloud is running on OpenStack or is going to be running on OpenStack? Well, it'd be very We've clear. got it there today. We're going to get into the details in just a minute. Okay. And so basically the, the, stat we're, the status we're in today is that we are running OpenStack today. We're going to bring more customers on it. And here in a very short period of time, we're going to open up to the whole world. This is really a tough technical challenge for Rackspace, isn't it? Because uh, it's like flying an airplane and changing the engines on the airplane yeah, while in it's flight. in there. Yeah, that's that classic example. Yeah, we actually did it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you know, plane kept flying, you know, we pulled it off. Okay, so it's been, uh, look, it's been a, a lot of hard work. Now, the interesting thing about this is OpenStack is only a two-year-old project. So think about the progress and traction this project's had in the community in just a short period of time. 
So the news today, which you know, Scobalizer stole my thunder on this slide, <laughs> okay, is basically that we're here to announce uh, to the world that we're ready to go, that we have that we've just about finished this race, and there have been a few design principles as we've done this work. As we think about moving to this cloud services world, it's not just the, about the technology; it's about creating incredible customer outcomes. And when we think about these outcomes, we think about the following things. Number one, it's got to be fast. You know, in a cloud services world. Customers want things instantly, this notion of instant compute. Number two, we want it to be familiar. We want this to feel like home when our customers log into our control panel. We want it to be something that's immediately intuitive with them because it's so familiar. And then all of this aggregates to make it easy to use. So we really feel like the user experience and the customer outcomes we're creating here, it's going to be fast, it's going to be familiar, it's going to be easy for customers to use. And this is what was driving our mind as we thought about the OpenStack opportunity and the tool sets that we've rolled out. So I'll now hand it over to John Gates, yep. our Chief Technology Officer. Thanks, Lanham. So yeah, we're going to get into the details of some of these products that we're announcing. So Lanham said we're moving to OpenStack. And at the same time, he said we were, you know, we we're already on OpenStack. So I'm going to clarify that for just two seconds before we move on. Rackspace, when we uh, built our cloud years ago, we built a, a, a piece of technology called Cloud Files. That was our product name. That made its way into OpenStack as the code name Swift. So Swift is storage code. We've been running Swift since day one. Even before OpenStack was a project, we've been running Swift. And we donated that code to OpenStack. That was our sort of initial contribution to OpenStack. That's what got us into the game. What we're really talking about here is transforming the rest of the cloud, all the other products, the other services that we have, onto the OpenStack platform. And we start with cloud servers. This is sort of the Rackspace flagship product. This is what everyone thinks of when they think of an infrastructure as a service cloud. I want a server, I want it from the cloud, and this is what we've built. We've taken uh, the OpenStack Nova project, which is, again, one of the, the uh, flagship products within, or projects within OpenStack. We've combined that with some others, Glance and Keystone. Can and you define just those yeah, three sure. things a little bit? Yeah, so Nova is cloud compute. Compute is, uh, again, the foundation for a lot of what we're doing here. It's the ability to spin up virtual machines in the cloud. It's the ability to do that via an API. It's the tools, you know, uh, Nova provides a lot of the tools that a, a service provider would need to track who's using what and bill for it and those kinds of things. Uh, Glance is an image management uh, project within, uh, within uh, the OpenStack project. It basically takes care of managing those virtual machine images for you, tracking them, assigning them to users, sharing them amongst users. And then Keystone is um, identity management. It's keeping track of the user names and passwords and, and accesses. Mm -hmm. So all of those come together to give us that API-driven, on-demand, compute cloud. Uh, this, what, what cloud servers means for us, uh, you know, and what it means for our customers, is the ability to create hundreds of servers, lots of servers, very rapidly, extremely scalable. That's one of the reasons, fundamentally, we were also very excited about OpenStack, is we knew we had to rebuild our cloud. We, we built it for the last generation of cloud, and we're moving into the next generation, we're moving faster than ever, and people want to do big things on the cloud, so we had to rebuild it for scale, and then, uh, again, we think this is a foundation for a lot of other capabilities. We'll get into a lot of those, but you start with this solid foundation, a project like OpenStack, all the innovation and all the work that's going on, this is a foundation for, for, uh, and, for and a lot of And you can see how companies like Firebase that I talked about that came out last Thursday, I mean, this world is moving so fast on top of our cloud, is able to, to abstract that world and build extreme scale where a, a game like Draw Something gets to 10 million users in a couple weeks, these kinds of new applications can be built on top because of this uh, innovation. Absolutely. So this product is, is available uh, starting today. We're, we're taking signups for a uh, limited availability release starting May 1st. So May 1st you'll be on it if you're signing up today. And full availability, unlimited availability this summer. So we're, we're uh, on the right track. And what we'd like to do at this point is um, bring up a customer, uh, a good friend of Rackspace. Tom Lunabus is from a company called Sosta. And Sosta has been using our cloud for a long time, and they're using the uh, OpenStack version of our cloud. So Tom, thank you for coming up and <laughs> chatting with us. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me, guys. It's the dream team. But it's a team. A little aside about <laughs> little aside about Sosta, because I did one of the first interviews over there, and everybody had Two 30 inch monitors. Wow. And, that and this was like four or five years and ago. We're right? hiring. And, <laughs> and I thought it was the most brilliant recruiting yeah. play I'd ever seen. And by the way, they bought <laughs> another one for home. So you would yeah. have a 30 inch monitor at home and in the office. Yeah. That's like, because I'm blind. 
So I have to have it both. No, I, you know, we, we, we're really excited to be here. This is a, a cool day for us as well as for Rackspace as well as it is for really everybody in, that's using the cloud. But Rackspace and Sosa have been together since 2008 uh, when we introduced CloudTest to the marketplace. And uh, so being up here is just a continuation of a long relationship in the cloud. So really excited to be here, guys. Let me uh, take a couple minutes and just explain what Sosa is. And maybe here's a right here. Uh, for those of you that don't know who we are. Right here. There you go. Um, we introduced this, this concept of cloud testing to the marketplace uh, in 2008. Now, to give you a little background, you know, for all of us that have been building web and mobile apps for the last uh, 10 years or so, there's a dirty little secret about uh, development uh, around mobile apps is that none of us or many of those apps are going out to the consumers without being tested, uh, specifically load tested and, and scale tested. And the reason for that was we couldn't afford it. Uh, the process of uh, testing an app these days could take as long as six to eight weeks. Uh, very expensive software for testing uh, that. But probably the worst problem was you needed a lot of servers to actually simulate load. And when, when we say load, we mean uh, if you're sending an e-card with Hallmark, you know, on uh, Valentine's Day, that's kind of their Super Bowl. They get about eight million people uh, sending e-cards. Or if you're TurboTax, you know, uh, you'll get 150,000 uh, a spike of 150,000 late filers at about 10:15 at night on April the 15th, yesterday, t today actually. Um, but they get about 28 million people hitting that site over the last couple weeks of, of, of the tax season. So uh, the ability to simulate 100,000 users or a million users may take as many as 500 to 1,000 servers. And up until cloud computing, up until uh, 2008, there was really no test lab that had the ability to do that. Uh, but we introduced this concept called that we call cloud test, which really leverages the capability or the access and the availability and the affordability of cloud computing. Um, we've built that up uh, over the last several years where we now have a, uh, a global test uh, cloud. Uh, you know, think about, you know, you've heard maybe a little bit about vertical clouds coming up. Well, our global test cloud is 300, uh, each one of our engineers has access to about 350,000 cloud servers around the world today uh, from 47 different uh, locations. Uh, so we can simulate load coming from different locations around the world. And we use about 17 uh, uh, APIs to, to be able to federate that together into an environment that you could provision tests for a million users literally in eight to 10 minutes. And Rackspace is one of our top providers along the way. We're here today because we're so excited about OpenStack. Uh, OpenStack offers a whole new generation of opportunities for our customers, like Verizon. You know, Verizon is, a, is an interesting one because every time uh, a new iPhone comes out, and there might be another one coming out one of these days, uh, there certainly was just an iPad 3 that was just launched. And every time there's a new uh, a phone or, or, or mobile device of any kind, uh, they have a pre-order site that causes uh, about 100,000 people to try to uh, buy a new phone or a new iPad within the first five minutes and literally millions of users in a very short burst of time. And so what they want to do is understand what that impact of that kind of load will have on their applications, their pre-order site, their infrastructure, whether it's in the cloud or not, or, and their network, and ultimately to their end users. So we use cloud computing to simulate the load hitting a, an application, in this case in, 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 uh, in, uh, uh, on the East Coast. But Rackspace has always been part of all of these tests that we do. So, and, and now what we've been doing over the last couple of days actually has been testing their OpenStack API. Uh, and, and what's important for everybody to understand is that uh, I'm up here probably not just because of uh, cloud test and cloud test kind of being a killer uh, ser cloud service for application developers out there because now they can test very affordably. But we're up here because uh, of the kinds of usage patterns that, that we do causes us to need. Any given day, we might be provisioning 10 to 15,000 cloud servers around the world. So we need for these tests, like some of these tests will need as many as 1,000 servers. Yeah. Now, other tests, uh, when you get into major events like the Olympics, and this is where over the weekend we used uh, uh, some of the OpenStack API from Rackspace, you're preparing for millions of users hitting a, a ticket location for the summer. Uh, and this is a very big initiative. So from this particular test, um, let me make sure I 
Sure, that's it. We're, we're simulating load coming from all around the world. So those 47 different locations that, that I talked about, we actually used 15 different locations this particular weekend and simulated millions of ticket buyers to the Olympics, all using uh, servers from Rackspace and other providers. But Rackspace and the OpenStack initiative for SOSTA means more servers, more locations, and as, as a service provider, probably the most significant thing. I mentioned that we, have, we use 17 different APIs. OpenStack offers the opportunity to reduce the number of APIs that we're actually maintaining and using. And we're really, really excited to be up here with, with the Dream Team. So thanks, guys, for having us. <laughs> Thank appreciate you, Tom. It. We Thank appreciate you, Tom. it. Yeah. Great. But, by the way, these, these uh, servers that you're using are both inside our data center and, and at SOSTA, right? We're other partners of yours. Other partners all around the world. So we're, we're federating different APIs all around the world. That's awesome. Thank you. That's awesome. So SOSTA is a great example of a customer using the cloud in a very, um, you know, a way, po a way that wasn't possible before the cloud. But there's a lot of other customers, a lot of other uh, Rackspace customers and people out there on the, in the world that want to uh, build their applications in the cloud. They want to build their enterprise applications, their traditional, um, you know, what used to be on-premise uh, IT applications. Those are all prime targets to go to the cloud. And what you need there is some other components. So we got a lot more to talk about here today. Let's talk about networks. Network is something that, uh, networking is something that every application needs. I think customers, as they build uh, these rich applications, they need rich uh, network control. Uh, they've had that control historically in their own data center. They've had it to some extent in hosting providers and uh, like Rackspace, but in the cloud, it's been hard to get your head around how to build these very you know, flexible networks. What we've introduced with Rackspace Cloud Networks is an API controllable, API driven networking system. This is uh, allowing customers to build these fully isolated layer two networks, including, uh, I might add, sort of the idea of multicasting and broadcasting. Those are Geeky terms to use your you uh, terminology. Use, you used to use a geeky term, yeah. layer two. What layer does that two. mean? Because people so, who don't live in, in yeah, the layer two. World so you've got uh, in 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 networking, you've got a stack. They call it a stack. You've got the physical layer, which is layer one. That's the Ethernet cards and the cabling and the switches. Uh, layer two is sort of that that layer. Well, it's implemented in a switch, and it's basically the the addresses that um, you know that you've heard the term MAC address. That's the the uh, the address that each of your uh, Ethernet cards have, that's layer two. So what we're doing here is ba basically making boundaries around groups of servers at layer two, uh, making it appear uh, in the old terms like a VLAN. We don't use VLANs in the cloud because they don't scale very well. We can only get to about 4,000 VLANs before we have to stand up an entirely new network. So we needed a better way to do this. And we, we need that capability for customers to create multiple layer two networks. They want to uh, isolate the database, from the web servers, from the uh, testing environment. So what we've done is we've basically built on top of a couple of uh, components. Quantum is a project within OpenStack. And also we use technology from a company called NYSERA. NYSERA is an innovator in this area of software-defined networking. They've basically taken a lot of the intelligence out of the network. They've virtualized the network. They've brought it up to um, basically an area where you can control that with software. And we're going to talk to NYSERA later on uh, this afternoon, so let's uh, let's keep that in the back of mind. But this is now that, that's mind blowing stuff because you don't need to buy another Cisco box on on your stack of servers in a data somewhere center somewhere yeah. just to isolate it from other networks in right. your data center. You just flip a few things on your screen, Voila. and right. now you got a new yeah. separate uh, network. It's crazy. Exactly right. This is an overlay over an existing network. We didn't have to rip out the Rackspace network to do this. This is software that's part of OpenStack Quantum and then part of a technology, like I said, NYSERA is providing a very cool capability. So By we'll way, get into you, that. If you want to have a party with a bunch of PhDs, those guys have, <laughs> <laughs> those guys have they some, going on. Yeah. they have yeah. some s crazy smart people from Stanford and other yeah. places and they're, they're changing the networking world in a huge way. Great, so we're, we're in preview stage today with this technology, it's, it's working, we've got it up and running for a, a subset of customers. Uh, we're launching this in limited availability in the summer time frame, so coming soon to you, cloud networks. Block storage, this is another area. I mean, we talked about compute, we talked about networks. Storage is another key component of an application architecture. This is storage that's specifically designed for highly transactional kind of applications, not long-term storage of your, uh, your uh, email or your um, video files. This is sort of transactional stuff, databases or or uh, applications that read and write a lot of um, data very quickly. 
So this is block storage. It's a way for us to allow customers to attach additional storage onto those existing um, cloud servers. It's independent of cloud servers, so you can add as many cloud volumes as you want to a server. This is based on technology, again, part of Nova and, and another project called Lunar, which are part of the OpenStack project. Um, we've introduced two performance tiers here. We've got traditional disk, and we've also got a higher performing SSD tier. That's solid state storage, which means it's, there's no moving parts. It just uh, reads and writes like memory. It's a very, very fast architecture. Sort of fast and faster. Fast and faster. Yeah. Extremely faster <laughs> is what SSD is. And then, you know, this gives the customers, again, I, I want to stress how important it is to put the control in the hands of the customer. Yeah. Customers want to be able to create these volumes. They want to attach them to whatever server they see fit, when they see fit, and they want to snapshot those for archival purposes. <laughs> All of this is exposed through the API and, and eventually through our, our control panel. Since SSD is more expensive, yeah. um, it, does OpenStack let you move workloads back and forth from disk storage to SSD storage? Well, uh, fundamentally, that's, that's going to be enabled through these APIs. Customers are going to have the flexibility to, d again, do snapshots, do things that they, they, uh, they do you know, historically with an enterprise type of uh, storage architecture. We give them the flexibility to interact with that via scripts and APIs, and you could certainly imagine a workflow where you'd move uh, data offline and back online when you need it. And not, you know, ideally you're paying for what you need when you need it, and you'd never go to that high performance tier if you didn't need to. You could, you'd want to be on lower performing disk just to save the money. So that's, that's kind of the theory behind that. Mm -hmm. So this again, preview today, limit availability this summer. And um, uh, one more product I want to talk about uh, that before we, we're going to do a demo in just a minute. So okay. all these products we're going to show you uh, today, but one, one last product. Lanham talked about making it uh, familiar uh, you know, easy to use our cloud, easy, familiar. Those are, those are terms that we use a lot around here at Rackspace. And we want that experience to extend into the, the customer portal. We talk about APIs a lot with cloud computing, but there's a whole class of uh, cloud citizens that want to use a GUI. They want to use an interface that they're much more familiar with. And we ra introduced Rackspace Cloud Control Panel to that end to make it easy for people to interact with our cloud. This is user-centered design. We've sort of started from the ground up um, and sort of rethought the whole process around how users were going to interact with our cloud, what kind, of, um, what kind of features they'd like to see in the cloud. We want to make it very responsive, very fast, flexible. Um, we've introduced a whole new uh, set of features in the, in the portal to make it very simple for them to find the servers. As you imagine, like Tom mentioned, hundreds or thousands of servers, you need a way to filter those down very quickly. You need a way to tag them very quickly, find them, check the status of them. All of that's represented in our new uh, Rackspace cloud control panel. And here in Rackspace San Francisco, we're very proud of this because a lot of this work was done here yeah, in the San A lot of the San developers Francisco are here, office. absolutely right. The developers that are building this are here in the building. So uh, we're very of, excited about this. A lot of cool technology underneath it done in Node.js and other <laughs> cool things that I don't understand. <laughs> so so what, I'd like, what I'd like to do at this point is, is invite Mark in Toronto. Mark is our uh, vice president of, oh, should we clap for everyone? Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Let's yeah. give it a yeah. Thank you. Uh, Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is the vice president of product at Rackspace. He runs the teams that are building all of these products. Well, great. It's, good, it's really good to be here, and I'd like to show you guys some of, the, some of our products, and it's really exciting stuff. And, you know, because I'm a geek, so I've got a command line up. Yeah, now we're going under the hood. <laughs> we're going yeah. way down. Yeah, yeah. So uh, we'll show you so we'll show you the control panel a bit later, but we're actually going from a command line. Mark so Mark is a geek. We both met each other I think before we were both at Rackspace at a Foo Camp at O'Reilly's Foo Camp. Yeah we did. That was really fun. And you were totally geeking out <laughs> yeah. there. So the glory days maybe. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. cool. So what I want to show you guys um, is we're going to show some of those uh, cloud servers building up in, in a really fast rate. So what we're going to do is uh, we're going to spin up a couple hundred cloud servers, and they're starting to spin up. We get a little, a little uh, window up the top saying active and building, and what you're seeing is you're seeing uh, servers starting to pop in. And I'm going to come back to this a little bit later, but these are going to start to spin up. In a few minutes, we're going to have a couple hundred servers up and ready to use and all very effective. This is like your cooking show, right? Where you uh, yes. yeah. start it, it, the it in turkey the is going in, in the, the oven, oven now. Yeah. It's got the proper seasoning <laughs> nice. and everything. <laughs> So and how, how long will that take to start spinning up? Uh, Ada, I'm already building just now. Oh, I saw it. It just snapped yeah. over. Yeah. This thing's going to update every 30 seconds or so, yeah. so you'll see the process of these servers going from building to active. Ha I mean, when you see a demo like this, tell me why this is so technically difficult and why it's so, so important for the industry to have the amount of speed to create new servers like this. So, so the cloud servers uh, manages the inventory of our entire fleet. 
So, it, so it's looking for, when you ask for 200 servers, it has to go for the kinds of things you want. Where should I put them? Where, where is space available? How do I create them in a fast and rapid manner? How do I manage the overall load across tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands of servers so that this thing can stay, uh, stay effective and, stay, and keep the resources available? So it's, it's, a, it's a very technically challenging feat because there's events going on all the time. And so there are people building, modifying, changing servers very, very rapidly. This just, is, think, just think about this for a second, though. Yeah. Think about how long it would have taken to spin up yeah, back 200 of anything three or, three or four or five years ago before the advent of cloud computing. I mean, yeah. literally, this was guys in the data center racking servers physically, cabling those servers, getting them prepped with the right operating system, turning them on, uh, you know, making sure that they all had all the right patches and all the right things uh, applied to them, and then turning them over to the end user, which and might be a developer or what and have you. It's, and it's really surprising. See, that's the other part of this thing about this. When you, when you install one of those servers, you get that CD or that DVD, and you've got to go <laughs> plug it in, and you got to get the right thing. Yeah. So <laughs> one of our projects is called Glance. What it does is it manages all those images flowing from some place where they're stored to the right server in the right time without causing bottlenecks and, and being very effective. So it's a, it's a very complex task. So we're already building 35 servers are already in the build process yeah. now. So it's and how, how scaled, uh, when there's millions of companies doing this all at one time on, on Rackspace or other OpenStack partners, yeah. how scalable is this? I, is this number always going to be this fast, even with this kind of traffic? Well, so one of the great things about the Nova design architecture is that it is very distributed. So when the system is under load, it starts to spin up more parts of compute, more, more of these controllers and inventory systems actually come online to handle the load. It's incredibly exciting. So as we get uh, uh, more, uh, more usage, we spin up more cloud to manage the inventory. It's a very innovative mm -hmm. part of the system, and it's something we didn't have in our, in our first architecture. In our first architecture, we would get some hotspots, and that would limit our throughput and our ability to serve our customers. Is there a way for a company like this Firebase that just came out to, to programmatically spin up more servers? So, you know, so when, they're, when their system is slowing down a little bit or needs more compute? Absolutely, so you would be able to use uh, cloud servers to do that. You'd be able to use our monitoring system, which we'll talk about in a few minutes, to be able to dynamically create uh, and adapt your resources uh, to, to, the, to the needs if you're gro uh, rapidly growing, similar to what that company or Instagram or many of the fast growing app companies need to do. Cool. All right, right, let's do it. Cool. Okay, so while that's going, double click that. Oops. I'm going to show you uh, a, that, I'm going to show you a demo of um, of the network. Now, again, we're still in still in, in, in control terminal land, and so it's very easy. This is a, a capture of a screen of, of our demo, and so it's really easy. We've got a command line tool which allows us to kind of create networks. Uh, very simply, create, show, uh, manipulate networks. And these these commands that you that are that will be typed here are going against the OpenStack API. Yes. And it's interacting with this stuff that we talked about, the uh, Quantum project and the Nicira technology mm -hmm. that's behind the scenes here. Absolutely. So what we're going to do, just a, a quick overview, we're going to we're going to create some networks, and we're going to put servers on them. We're going to be able to show you how to do this without having to go pull cables, without having to go find and read the instruction manual for your Cisco switch, <laughs> without having to do any of that kind of stuff. And so. This is taking hours out of somebody's day, and we're doing it in just a couple of seconds at a control terminal, and it just happens nearly instantly through an API or through uh, as we build out, uh, as, you, as you build your application using these APIs. So, real simple. Nova create isolated network. Bing, there it is. And just very simple. Then you want to launch a server on some of those networks. So, again, it's, it's one click. You, you've told Nova, hey, build me a server, put it on the public network, and Build it on this isolated network that I've got. And a couple of seconds. So that's what you see here, the result of that command. So that's the result of that. It, it looks, it looks it's very simple and it's already happened very quickly. So lots of times when you're building these complex uh, network applications, what you want to do is some servers are available on the internet. Of course, many servers with your uh, right. personal, personal in, in information are not available. They're hidden. So now I'm going to put a server that's all protected and behind the network. It's like, go again, look for the network. Now here I've got to attach that to the actual private network address inside uh, our open our inside our system. So we're copying and we're pasting that into the build command, and we're now building a Nova server that now lives only within that isolated network. 
very simple, very fast, and very straightforward. And now if I do a list, you'll see we've got two servers that are up and building. One of them's completely protected, and the other one's available to the internet. So we'll get a web server, a database server, we start to layer those on, and real fast and real easy to do. So this is sort yeah. of the foundation of that idea of a three-tier architecture. We've got yes. some servers out on the front, mm -hmm. in the public network. You've got maybe an app tier, a database tier, something like that, where certain things just don't need to be on the internet. Yes. So therefore, you want to protect them, you want to keep them isolated. And then we talked about uh, some of the capabilities that are in there, you know, broadcast and multicast and some of these yeah. advanced networking technologies, allowing those servers to talk to one another yes. with unrestricted uh, access, no right. so, sort of no uh, uh, bottlenecks in the way. It's all okay. sort of a, a, a really nice, easy to use network for, for any kind of application. Uh, absolutely, you could put you know, a couple hundred servers on there. Uh, are, these, are these new virtual networks more resilient? Are, 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 they, are you able to uh, look at uh, denial of service attacks in a new way, or are you able to, to yeah. identify hackers who are trying to get into your systems in a new way? Since it's all software, there's kind of a complete set of diagnostics that allow you to, to instead of having to look at it at the, the switch level and try to kind of uh, go through the logs, here you've got a much better set of diagnostics, and it's so software controllable. So if you do have an, a, a switch or a software network that's going to attach, you can always spin up another one in a couple of seconds, uh, where it's really hard to do that today. You can't yeah. migrate your resources back and forth. Here it allows you to start to build very dynamic applications that are highly secure. And this is something we're very excited about to start to make use of cross rack space. In the near future, we expect that we'll be able to use these kind of networks and bridge into our managed our hardware devices. That's something that's, that's very, uh, very exciting for us to be able to do. Oh, you forgot to How's that. How's that demo working through the store? Oh. So um, let me sp I must spend a little bit of time talking to you guys about block storage. Again, it's a, a, a command line interface, a lot of very simple tools. So I'm going to go build some, some disks and show you what they're like and go attach them to a cloud, to a cloud server. The uh -oh. Oops. I think our, our demo so, what, so one of the things that, that we, we find is that there's a lot of our, our customers are very interested in having cloud servers detached from actual uh, from the actual server. So you've got the server, if you spin one, spin one up or spin one down, you want to be able to have the storage exist independently of that. So right now what we're doing is creating, uh, doing a list. We see, have two kinds of drives. We have fast and super fast, as I call them. <laughs> Um, and so we've just built an instance where we've got a, a high performance 250 gig, a super high performance 250 gig SSD drive, and a half a terabyte uh, software, uh, so, uh, physical disk. Very straightforward. And now we can start to connect those up to servers and begin working with them really easily. So just do a list. Find the server. Find the server you're looking for. You've got to have a server out there. And then you start to attach them to the, to the drive. It is you know, a few commands. Through a, through a system administrator can do this, uh, but of course the APIs are right. how, how mostly this is going to happen, but you'll be able to, to share this with, with folks. Yeah, what, what amazes me is just, I mean, I can read that command, Nova, volume attach, block storage test, that's the name of my uh, my server. It's your server. The yep. uh, ID number of the uh, the volume, 32, and then the, the uh, device name that I want to attach it to on the server. I mean, that's it's super easy. dead simple. I mean, it's, it's really, really pretty straightforward to, to do that with an API. And we're going to make it even easier with what you're going to talk about next. <laughs> Absolutely, <laughs> just with the, with, the, with the user experience, yeah. the user interface. So it's just very, very easy to do, and this allows us to attach tons of many, many volumes onto a cloud server, spin them up, and then whenever you want, you just spin them right down. It's a lot mm -hmm. faster than going to the Apple Store and buying a Seagate drive today. Huh? Oh yes, <laughs> it totally is. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's crazy. What so, what is that going to let a developer do that they couldn't have done in the past, you know, it, so, in so terms of... Yeah, so there's a number of things it's going to be able to do. So, so when you've got core data, you've got your core personal data, your core uh, a, a database or other things like that, you want to have that set of assets available to any of the compute resources you want. And then you can easily manage compute different from storage, uh, which, which allows a lot of flexibility in putting hundreds of servers behind a load balancer, and they can start to attach, uh, inf get the information they need very, very quickly. These are, these are almost like direct attach drives. They're that fast. And that's one of the things yeah. we designed it for, is very high performance. Yeah. Be sure to share with us the principles here. Ah, thank you. Okay. So w we designed the user interface with a, with a couple of core principles. It's got to be fast, 
it's got to be familiar and it's got to be easy to use. And familiar, I think, is really important because they're, they're, the cloud is a new set of technologies, but it doesn't have to be an entirely new set of ideas. You need, we need to be able to use things that are very familiar to, to developers, to, to technologists today. We have servers, we have load balancers, we have disks. It is all relatively, it's all very easy. We try to keep the terminology and the language, the things that you're familiar mm -hmm. with, and, uh, and not have to go and, and relearn a lot of things. Fast, people spend 90x percent of their time on somebody else's website or doing something else. So I always believe that a great product uh, is as fast as the rest of the world. And so it's gotta be, got to be Google speed, Facebook speed. It's got to be fast and easy to use. I want people to feel happy that we've built a product that makes them more productive, more effective, and, and lets them know that they're in control. And I think that's really one of the, some of the major design goals that our, desi our team is uh, trying to achieve here. So and what you're demoing here is the, the new con control panel. This is the new control panel. We've already got a number of servers up there. We've got some of our, our current production servers, our first generation servers, and we've got um, a few that are our, that are our um, our, new our new platform. So we've got search that's very easy to do. So if I want to go do a quick query and find all my web tier, I can filter down from hundreds or, or how many servers I've got down to a very small number. It's very fast and simple. If I want to go look quickly and go look, what, what is, what's my dev stack look like? I want to go manage them. Here I've looked at the tag. We've got the ability to quickly and easily tag things. So it's a great way to kind of filter information and sort things out very easily. If I wanted to create a new server, just go mark one, like this, like that, create a server, it's off to the, it's off to the races, and you're already going to see there's, there's notifications, there's a, there, it pushes information at you very, in a very fast and effective manner. Can you, can you build recipes of servers or groups of servers that you could just click on and have five servers built with uh, Ubuntu and, th and MySQL on there? Very, very soon. We are we're very excited about those kinds of technologies. You can kinds do that with technology. a script today, Robert. You, yep. can, yeah. you can write a script against those APIs, and we have customers do that every day. They, they take the, the uh, Nova you know, instances, they snapshot them, they store them, they can reuse those over and over again via the APIs. We'll enable that in the, in the uh, control panel as well. Absolutely, and try to make those scripts more accessible to... to so to our someone. innovation work on OpenStack isn't done yet. Oh, oh no. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. Yeah. Absolutely right. not. And so let me, so this is just one of the, the major features of, of the new user interface. Of course, it's very easy to build load balancers. Uh, right now, I don't think I have any load balancers uh, in the system yet. Oh, it says I don't. Uh, I always love this arrow, because one of the things that I always think about, like, what happens when you start to do something? And so the team has spent a lot of effort to go, oh, this is probably what you want to do if you're here. Right, <laughs> right. So just very, a very fast and easy way to kind of create Put some servers. I can put some servers on there, of course, very easily. This is an app server load balancer, apparently. We're going yeah, to so put uh, a couple app servers in there. Yep, I'm going to load against. OK. And then and just, just, add add, just add them right in. And create your load balancer. And then it's created. And it's going to go spin up a, 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 a cloud load balancer. It's successfully created it. And in just a, a few seconds, it's going to show it up there, and it's going to be able to take traffic uh, instantly. Right. So this is just part of uh, reducing the keystrokes, reducing the complexity, being able to have control, and be able to easily see things. Yeah. There's some Say a little things. more about Harry and team and how they do this, because it's oh. remarkably elegant. Thanks. So uh, I'm very proud of uh, our, our user experience design team. So we've got a number of people out here in San Francisco that are experts at understanding users' needs, what do they want to get done, how do they think about things. And they've got, uh, and they, when they talk to customers, they listen to what they really need, and they go off and they understand the flows, what do people care about. And they prototype out a large number of different systems here, different designs, till they came up with the one that they felt worked best and had the best user testing, and it had the highest success rate. So earlier designs had lower success rates. It was like, ah, 86% of people could kind of get that done. Now it's much higher than that, right. and so and we'll continue to get feedback from these guys. Right. If you're on the Rackspace team, can you just raise your hand so I can see? Oh, look, at several that. people. Yeah. So one thing before you leave this, uh, point out down at the bottom, there's a little uh, message that says, "I wish this page would blank," and so you can basically 
fill in whatever you want. I think I might have filled in something yes. there. Give a demo. Give a demo. <laughs> 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 I wish this page would give a demo. So that gets directly feedback into the, uh, the product team. This goes directly to our product guys. And I, we've awesome. confirmed. And, and when they, get, they get hundreds of pieces of feedback for this. It's really exciting. Uh, because it's like, we're, that's, that's part of fanatical for support for us. It's like, this thing is fast, it's easy, and it, it, it's, it's there for you. Right. And, and we're providing choice. I mean, if people want to geek out with a command line, oh. they can. If people want to have the use X at the control panel, they can. Absolutely. Uh, if great APIs that are fully, they're very well documented, they can do that too. And so <laughs> we're going to find, as you build these large systems or you build these s startups, you know, the IT guy needs this el element, designers right. need that element. So really we're trying to make sure we've got all the parts of the team enabled to be able to do this. Very cool. Cool. So um, just kind of real quickly. So. Our Cloud Files product, our first uh, OpenStack pro product, you can go there, maintain, look at, look at your files, and manipulate those. And of course, DNS, you can, you can build and manipulate DNS records. More of these products are going to be coming onto this control panel just very soon now. So that's awesome. really a lot of exciting stuff yeah. we've got going on in the products. Incredible awesome. stuff. Thank you. So let's go back to our. Oops. There you go. So where are we at? 205 active servers already for building. <laughs> That's awesome. Okay. Thanks, Mark. Sure. Thank you. So, we're not done yet. That was a great demo of sort of the core products. We've got a bunch more in store for you. I'm going to walk through a few more uh, components that we're really excited about that are part of our cloud. Um, let's make sure we're on the right page here. Cloud databases. So, I mentioned earlier cloud block storage, and I mentioned it as a, uh, you know, sort of a potential tool to build databases. But it's even better if the database is sort of built for you and, and managed for you. So we've introduced a product called Rackspace Cloud Databases. Uh, this again, built on some, uh, some components of, of the uh, OpenStack project, Red Dwarf, Nova. This is designed, this first iteration of the product is design, designed to deliver MySQL databases. Again, a very familiar database to most people building web, app, uh, web application startups. They all start on MySQL. Um, we have built this specifically to overcome the performance tax of the cloud. I think a lot of times in the first generation of cloud computing, people would build their MySQL database inside of a cloud server, inside of an instance of some sort, and they would find that the performance wasn't anywhere near what they saw with a bare metal server. Bare metal just works better. So what we've designed this system to do is to mimic bare metal as close as possible. We want the performance characteristics to be just like they would be if you were on a physical server. We also taken the extra step of taking a lot of the burden off of the system administrator or the DBA in terms of managing these, these databases. I think most people, when they want to build an app, they just want a database. They don't really want to set up everything and tune it and tweak it and patch it and, and do all of that. So we've done a lot of that work for you in this turnkey model of, of databases. Uh, you know, Just like the other products, these are databases that are API accessible. You can say, spin me up a database using a command line. You'll be able to do that through our control panel as well. And this is essentially just a real quick head start for um, the customer to get, to get a database. So if, if MySQL uh, uh, releases a security patch or, or update to their core That's on function, us. Rackspace takes That's care of it. All, all my right. database servers That's automatically right. get that update. That's right. So this, again, this is one of those uh, early access. You can sign up today. Uh, on May 1st, we'll have uh, you know, people actually using this product for real and uh, you know, with SLAs, with um, mm -hmm. you know, billing, with, with support from Rackspace. And in, in the summer time frame, it'll be uh, available to everybody. Now let me give you, just, just because we talked about performance a lot, let me give you a little comparison. We um, did a little test. Uh, there's a product out there in the market called uh, RDS from our friends at Amazon. And uh, their product is one, really probably the first version of this. This is the first iteration of databases in the cloud specifically built for that. But we did, did some performance testing and our performance test came back uh, really, in our, in our mind, really impressive in terms of how much faster uh, our platform is. And it's because, again, we built it with databases in mind. We built it with a different cloud architecture. We didn't just reuse the traditional hypervisor. We built it with a special um, set of, of services underneath and again using OpenStack as the foundation for that. And transactions per second, that's a very typical benchmark in terms of databases. Um, we, we hit uh, almost uh, 280 transactions per, per second compared to a very similar apples to apples price comparison kind of Amazon RDS instance that was at 84. So 280 versus 85, 
pretty yeah. impressive performance yeah, at, at a, roughly the same price. And this is so key for developers because uh, databases are at the heart of companies now, right? Uh, it's where we, all you When you talk to Mark Zuckerberg, he talks about building data. MySQL yeah, right. and sharding it out and dealing with data, and that translates into right. speed and features. Um, and tons of features to come on this. This is sort of our, our uh, you know, our first pass at databases in the cloud, but we got a lot more in, in store for you. Backup, you know, backup is another big one. On this slide, we talk about Rackspace Cloud Backup. Rackspace, historically, as a company, we've always been in the uh, hosting, managed hosting, and, and that meant a lot of services that we provided on top of cloud, and one of those has always been backup, and so we wanted to translate what we learned in that era into the cloud era. And we, we offer a, a, a Rackspace cloud backup service. This is where customers can go in and customize their schedule for what they want backed up, when they want it backed up. Uh, they can optionally use encryption on top of their backups. I know there's a lot of companies that have mandates from certain industries that say you must back up and encrypt those backups. And then also uh, introduce things like compression and deduplication to reduce the size of those data sets that are going into the backup so you don't pay as much for it. This is a very flexible tool. It's a, it's a customer-driven self-service tool. They can tap into some really cool technology that we've built behind the scenes and, uh, and do their own backups. Limited availability, uh, sign up today for limited avail availability next week, and then unlimited in the summertime. Does that give you a choice of how many data centers your stuff will be backed up to and where to? Yeah, that's going to be pretty flexible. I think you know we've got multiple data centers around the globe, and I think customers are going to want some some options there. If if it's not in that first release, it'll be shortly thereafter. So, uh, monitoring, can't forget monitoring. You know, we talk <laughs> about all these capabilities. You know, servers and storage and networks and databases. This is what. Uh, you have to have sort of that dashboard to know what's going on in that environment. You've got so many moving parts. Customers oftentimes cobble together their monitoring solution from a wide variety of you know, either open source or off the shelf or services now, software as a service. Yeah. What we thought we would do is take some of the, the monitoring systems we built here at Rackspace uh, and expose those through an API, cloud-like API, you know, customer-driven. Uh, this is you know, a monitoring solution that you can provision monitors, you can interact with your uh, data that's coming out of those monitoring systems, you can feed that into your own applications. So you're basically using this as the instrumentation yeah. for a, a very you know complex you know complex applications potentially. Yeah, whenever uh, I'm walk into a startup today, they usually have a, a, I call it a data porn wall or a, <laughs> a, a dashboard is the technical <laughs> yeah. term for it, right? But they have these huge LED monitors. Yeah. Like you walk into Flipboard's offices, that's what you see. Just these right. four or five huge screens. We do too. Yeah, we have a lot of those. Yeah, that's right. That diagnostic. But this is where the data comes from. How do you yeah. get that data into those dashboards? There's got to be guys that you know spend their days figuring out how to probe that particular app and feed it up into the dashboard. What we want to do is take a lot of that burden off of you uh, in terms of, of building and scaling that management and monitoring system. And um, we've done that with Rackspace Cloud Monitoring. This is a platform. We think of this as you know, uh, a, not, a, not an end, but a beginning in terms of, of what customers are going to do with it. Um, we envision, you, know, you asked about automating applications and scaling applications. This is the foundation for being able to do that. If you need to know when your app is hitting a wall and you want to add more servers, this is where that data is going to come from. Now, this doesn't replace uh, like uh, New Relic, for instance, no, which is no, one no, of no. our partners, right? No, it, there's, it, there's, there's add on to this it. Is, this is, at this point, uh, I would say is very complementary in many ways. There's a lot of functionality here, but it doesn't go all the way up to you know the uh, certain components of the application tier. Right. And there's there's things that are, you're always going to need some you know very specialized components to monitor and manage. But this gives most people most of the things they need at the foundation level. And I think that's, you know, again, that's a great, uh, great way to take burden off the sysadmin, uh, the DevOps guy, and, and really get him back to work on the innovation. Another product that is sign up today early, uh, you know, availability early access May 1st, and unlimited availability in the uh, summer time frame. So this is a picture that sort of pulls it all together. I've talked about a lot of products. We've got a lot of things going on here. This is a, a slide that we put together to try to pull it all together. Um, you know, up at the top, you've got business applications, customers building them, startups building them, enterprises bringing their applications to the cloud. Uh, they're interfacing with our cloud via APIs or the control panel that we talked about. They're using these core products like cloud servers and cloud files and private cloud and uh, the storage system, the database system that we talked about. Uh, they're backing up their data, all of that stuff in the middle, uh, potentially connected to uh, uh, you know, physical servers in our data center with a, the RAP Connect hybrid system. 
Um, and again, on a foundation, a foundation of load balancers and monitoring and cloud networks and ICERA networks. And there's another area where hybrid is really um, starting to play a, a key role. Everybody talks about hybrid clouds. We don't think it's sort of a one size fits all world. We think customers ought to be in the driver's seat when it comes to how they use clouds and where those clouds exist. OpenStack has been, like Lana mentioned, a, a foundation for public cloud, but it's also a great foundation for private cloud, and that could be in a customer premise data center. Yeah. So this hybrid uh, plays a key role in sort of connecting those two together. We've got some technology there today. We plan to do a lot more with the cloud networks and the NICERA technology to extend those layer two boundaries beyond the, the scope of just a rack space data center. And uh, really on top of the ultimate support uh, layer there, the fanatical support layer, that is the foundation for everything we believe in. We think all of this technology needs that um, that fanatical support. And we think this is a heck of a portfolio for our customers. Absolutely. I mean, we're pumped about that. Absolutely. Yeah. Very excited. By the way, we're, there's an OpenStack conference going on. Oh, right yeah, we now. can talk about that. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah. And, and a lot of our partners, are like HP and Dell and AT&T and Intel, they're building other systems on, the, on this same infrastructure, right? Yep. yep, there will be other clouds based on OpenStack. I think that's, Tom was talking about the ability for them to tap into multiple clouds using the OpenStack API. And um, you know we're betting on the fact that there's going to be a lot of clouds out there in the market. Our difference is always going to be fanatical support. Our difference is the customer experience, the customer engagement, the level of support and uh, guidance and advice that we can provide customers, and the outcomes, the ultimate outcomes of you know a better uh, yeah. SLA and a better service experience. Yeah. Yeah. And we've gotten some feedback already. But yeah, this from is customers. It, OpenStack is a true industry open source. Absolutely, it's uh, it's software. It's, it is software. Yeah. 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 Yeah, a lot of exciting stuff happening over there. Yeah, so th this is what the customers are saying. I mean, they're they're the, the people that have you know used our cloud so far. They're excited about the open standards. They're excited about the scale. We talked to Sosta about scale. Uh, they like that it's fast. They like that it's a scalable platform. Reliability was a key word that came out. Uh, you know, Sony likes the fact that we're innovating and you know it's performing well for them. So lots of you know lots of exciting feedback around this. Yeah, and so this is a picture of one of our cloud engineers, Jason Canavalli. And he's receiving our um, highest honor here at Rackspace, which is actually to get to wear a straight jacket. Okay, so, <laughs> look, the home of fanatical support, it's about recognizing those that are fanatics. So Jason's one of the rackers that has uh, written the code here and made, made this portfolio possible. And I would tell you, you know, we are proud of a lot of the stuff we've done at our company. We're proud to be recognized as the best place to work on a couple of different continents. We're proud of the success we've had serving customers. But we are super proud of OpenStack. When we partnered with NASA to launch OpenStack a couple of years ago, what we were imagining was a cloud world that didn't have proprietary systems and lock-in. We were imagining a world where customers could, in an instant, get all the scale and compute and storage that they required without having to worry about being held hostage to a platform. You know, we imagine a world where um, tech companies would have to compete on technology and customer outcomes as we deliver this technology as a service. And so here we are two years later and we now think it's real. You know, we think with this portfolio we're launching this summer that we're getting customers on, I mean literally signing them up today, we think that vision's finally coming true. So we believe we're in a magic moment in technology, our industry. We think our company's going to do cool stuff and we're thrilled to be partnering here at OpenStack with so many others. So thank, now, thank you to all the rackers who have who've gotten us here, yeah, amen. And, and our industry partners at, all over the industry, AT&T, Bell, HP, on and on Lots and on. Great folks. We yeah. could go for 20 minutes and talk about all the companies involved. Yeah, 150 plus. Yep. Yeah, that's big. Well, thank, thank you, you so right. much.